delighted to see uh, you all today and also uh, remotely. So I think we have even here in person and remotely, right? So we have uh, Nirmanakaya and Sambhogakaya covered. So um, I'm delighted uh, to introduce uh, Geshe Tenkyo from uh, Sarah J Foundation, our close neighbor in the Bay Area. Um, I've had the privilege of having a conversation with him for the last uh, hour or so to learn what his interests are and how we can help him and Sarah J Foundation and how um, they can be of help to us. Can you hear me okay? Is there a friend? Yeah. Um, so uh, today also I'm delighted that we have the presence of a very skilled translator, uh, Shara's here across from me. Um, he is the uh, program director at Guto uh, in Richmond uh, and uh, the translator. Uh, so um, we have uh, the ability to have the talk translated uh, and also have uh, you know discussion, question, and answer. So he's he's going to talk uh, for like maybe an hour, and then we have time for um, till one, and then time for you know questions, right? So I've been promoting the fact that uh, there are a number of people who of course, are familiar with Bodhicharavatara and Shantideva, and uh, the discussion will be, um, you know, uh, high level, but that you guys are up to it, don't you think? Uh, our own Geshe Damchala has been, uh, you know, uh, over the years giving uh, lectures on Shantideva, so this is familiar territory, but, um, it can't be repeated enough, right? Wisdom, we need wisdom, don't we? Yeah. Also, uh, uh, you know, with, with Geshe here, I consider it like, uh, you know, Sarah J in the monastery, you know, like family, right? Family. So um, we, we, we show respect out of love, not out of obligation, right? We have heart connection, so we know that um, we can uh, speak our own truth, and we can even ask uh, kind of embarrassing, idiotic questions, right? <laughs> we can, we're just family here, so we can ask, right? So, but... <clears throat> hmm. what, is, what is the length of time I sh engage in exposition here? ちょっとしっしゃんあ、彼さんに彼しっしゃんが。ちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょっとちょ
the way of the Bodhisattva, the Bodhicharya Avatara, here, as we concern ourselves with the ninth chapter, was composed by, should you ask who composed it? The author is Shantideva, in Sanskrit, Shantideva, in Tibetan, Shivatha. No. The author, Shantideva, came in the ninth century, a scholar from the ninth century. Hmm. The place of the composition of the way of the Bodhisattva, composed by Shandideva in the seventh century, was Nalanda University. The actuality of the, the, the practice of the Sutra and the Mantrayana was clandestine in a sense for Shantideva, who was known publicly as the one who engaged in but three activities of sleeping, eating, and defecating. Now, at this time, students of Nalanda University, who do not recognize the qualities of Shantideva, thought it most appropriate to, to expel him from Nalanda University for the purpose of Nalanda University was to support students who engage in study, contemplation, and meditation, but apparently Shantideva engaged in none of these, and it would be a disservice to Nalanda if such a person were to remain in Nalanda University, so they hope to expel him. Uh, so dark and dot your attendela and a remote chene, and a conte jotoke mare, and indeed into Koran Ronjig and a few dog race and a so dark and dot your chivares. Now, it isn't suitable to expel a person from a monastery unless there has been a violation to their vows, and as no such violation had occurred in Shanti Deva's case, they needed to find another basis for expulsion. So they thought it would be appropriate to require him to recite the entirety of the Pradamuksha Sutra and uh, requested that he do so. So they asked that he, he do this, he do this recitation of the Pradimoksha Sutra, uh, do an exposition of the Dharma in addition, and initially he didn't he did not accept uh, the request. Uh, he refused initially, but with urging he did accept it, and they he said he responded, "Would you prefer that I introduce something?" unheard of, something novel, or would you like to hear what you uh, are familiar with? And they said, well, as your behavior is such a departure from the norm, let's hear something that's new. The 
and as he did this, the Dharma exposition that he provided was the the very Bodhicharya avatar, the way of the Bodhisattva here. And in the ninth chapter, as he uh, progressed through the ninth chapter, he began to levitate and rise into the into the sky. ละนําการละพุทธะละนําการละพุทธะ <laughs> As Shantideva recited from what is now the ninth chapter of the Bodhicharya Avatara, he levitated into space itself and then became invisible, uh, no longer apparent. And then thereafter, there emerged a disagreement between auditors, those who had listened, uh, whether it was a text he had recited of nine chapters or ten chapters. <laughs> ขอลานี่ชุบะเรสขอยาปยานจะเต็นเดชุเรสขอลานี่ขอจะกาลโคชุเทวายินสาเต็นเดชีลาเพปเตวิกาบลานี่ขอยาเพปยอมะเรสย
Now, so it was then to develop an enthusiasm uh, in listeners for bodhicitta. The benefits of bodhicitta are described. Followed, followed by the second chapter, which isn't yet the moment for taking in hand bodhicitta, but is the moment for the removal of negativities that obstruct the way, that obstruct or prevent the arising of the mind of enlightenment. It is also the second chapter concerned with the drawing together of supportive conditions for the emergence of the mind of enlightenment, bodhicitta, and so the second chapter with its topic, purification of negativities. That's why. But the name of 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 the third chapter is of the actual taking up of the mind of enlightenment. The topic of the fourth chapter is conscientiousness. The topic of the fifth chapter, mindfulness and vigilance. The chapter of the sixth, patience. Rather, the topic of the sixth, patience. The topic of the seventh, energetic discipline. The, chap the topic of the eighth, mental concentration. And the topic of the ninth chapter, wisdom. Now, within this, the ten chapters of the Bodhicharya Avatara are contained the six paramitas as well. In the third chapter, concerned with taking hold of bodhicitta, the benefits of generosity are presented. In the fourth chapter and the fifth chapter, concerned with conscientiousness, mindfulness, and vigilance, we deal with the branch of ethical discipline. Now, of course, in the sixth chapter, patience, the topic is patience. Thus, then, with the topic of the seventh chapter being energetic discipline, the eighth mental concentration, and the ninth wisdom, we find all of the six paramitas dealt with in the chapters. Now, now at this time, the moment is of the wisdom chapter. Now, generally speaking, wisdom is a mental factor, may be understood as a mental factor that is able to, to discriminate between ontological qualities of a thing. Uh, it's nature, having been produced, characteristics that it has, this faculty of discrimination and understanding is wisdom. <clears throat> that is of wisdom generally. Now, particularly here, wisdom is, is meant to concern wisdom, understanding the mode of subsistence or abiding of phenomena actually. Now, 
now here we speak of the wisdom paramita, the pragya paramita, for the reason that there is the appearance of phenomena mode the subsiding rather the subsistence of phenomena and here the understanding of that actual mode of phenomena is the paramita of pragya now this understanding, this wisdom is critical. And why is it so critical? It is so critical because we have our wishes, we have our desires, and we have an experience dissatisfaction. That dissatisfaction arises because wisdom is absent. The dissatisfactions that we know and the hardships that we know are a result of remaining naive and misunderstanding the actual mode of phenomena in their subsistence. And so to remove, to eradicate that ignorance and naivety, the emergence, the development of actual wisdom is critical. It won't be enough to engage in prayer alone, and thus the importance of the wisdom faculty. No. Now, here I will go into the actual text itself. ที่เอเนตาตาที่ดีกรรมที่เป็นเชื้อเพื่อเก็บทองตัวสมบัติสงยาจิงดูสเอเนจิกลาสงสุเชมบาจิกลาอ่าชวนจุกเส้นเจเ
Now we begin with the, the root verse itself. All these branches of the doctrine, the enlightened sage expounded for the sake of wisdom. Therefore, they must cultivate, cultivate this wisdom who wish to have an end of suffering. Now, there, there are two interpretations of the opening line. All these branches of the doctrine of an, the enlightened sage expounded for the sake of wisdom. Now, all these branches, one explanation is that this includes specifically the preceding branch of mental concentration. The explanation and interpretation I follow is that all these branches re refers to the first branch of generosity and all inclusive of the branches in the middle all the way up to the wisdom branch all of these all these branches of the doctrine the enlightened sage expounded for the sake of wisdom so there are these two uh, differing explanations the one that all these br branches includes all from generosity uh, through the others the other being mere mental concentration mm. ตาเทลาเนตินเดงเอลาปันตินเดชีวายนาเทลาทอกปะจิงุเรสทอกปะเนจิตาตอนยิตอปิชีรับเกวาลาเนชุนจุกเซมเกญามเนจิมบาลา
Tungale Tarve Tarva Dongi Kazaji Yino. No, no. And eh, uh, Tony to be shared in Magina Pavio Mares. So it is then the ultimately actually wish to for liberation from samsaric suffering must necessarily engage in these branches. And eh, that the chair in Bochegea and in prison your ass. Chuchi Chini Kata, but then then you not summoning you. Tell you young and that you're not changing the chola miss and tender top and tender on your ass. No. And Stoba Sanjay Jum de Degay and his own rap chin, chick hundreds on a young old Jupicone, Tony to be shared up my cheaper cheva at Cheva, and many happy chitters on Pashata chat your ass. And in Jerry Maja in the praise of dependent origination says clearly that all of the Buddhist scriptures, uh, both directly and implicitly, are for the development of the mind. Uh, realizing emptiness. No. Mm -hmm. For, for uh, the wisdom realizing emptiness, one must have familiarity with the two truths. In order for the wisdom realizing emptiness to ever arise, one must have a preceding familiarity with the distinction between the two truths. And there it is then in the presentation of the two truths, there is first the obscurant truth and the ultimate truth. Now, this distinction between the obscure truth and the ultimate truth is not a division of the very notion of truth itself, but a division of objects of knowledge. <laughs> You cannot have in the notion of truth an accommodation for falsehood within it. Thus it is you cannot have of truth there being a false truth. And for that very reason, then, this distinction between the obscure truth and the ultimate truth is a, is a distinction based on objects of knowledge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Between these two, between the obscure truth and the and the ultimate truth, all objects of knowledge uh, are included. Mm -mm. There is no third category that would in, that would contain an alternative to these two. Mm. So here we have then this this distinction here and the basis of the distinction. Mm. 
Now, the two truths share in the, the very same essence. The nature is identical, but the distinguishing character, characteristic may be distinct, with distinct distinguishers, yet a, a shared identical nature. Yeah, there is a there is a there is a debate uh, regarding this. Uh, there is an argument that that the the nature too is distinctly two and not merely the differentia being two. Now, our view is that the two are of a identical nature with different differentia. Uh, all the phenomena will have these two differentia into the obscurant and the ultimate. Uh -huh. Relative and ultimate, these two, these, the two truths are declared to be, for ultimate is not within the reach of intellect, for intellect is said to be the relative here, the ultimate is not within the reach of intellect, the intellect is said to be the relative, here we have the essence and nature of, or rather the nature and def definition of these. Mm. <laughs> The ultimate is not within the reach of intellect. The correct interpretation of this is not that the ultimate, the ultimate mind is not a apprehender or perceiver. That is not the, inter the correct interpretation. The correct interpretation is that it differs from the apprehension of the ordinary mind. Yes, <clears throat> However, there are those who argue that, in fact, the object of the ultimate is, in fact, not inintelligible. There is this argument. Tinia <laughs> Now the argument proceeds for those who maintain that the, the, the ultimate is not an object of knowledge or an intelligible. The argument is that if it were an intelligible, or an object, object of knowledge, then it would necessarily be found by, discovered by, and apprehended by the Arya Bodhisattva in uh, meditative absorption on the ultimate. 
So we have here divergent explanations. They are permissible, the divergence there. The ultimate is not within the reach of intellect, for intellect is said to be the relative. Here we have the definition of uh, the relative in this line for intellect is said to be the relative. For intellect is said to be the relative. Here we have the definition of the relative. The relative is that which is established through linguistic convention, that which is established through linguistic convention is said to be the intellect, and that which is merely established through linguistic convention is not the object of the ultimate. <clears throat> Here the distinction then. Whatever the phenomenon, the distinction may be drawn between its obscurant or relative Truth and its ultimate truth. So any given phenomenon that may be object of the of sense perception and of mental consciousness, these will, phenomenon, phenomena will, make their appearance to the sense faculties and to the mental faculty in relative form. Beyond this appearance is their form that is different from the relative form. <laughs> The appearance of phenomena differs from the mode of subsistence of that phenomena. Searching for a phenomenon that conforms entirely with its appearance will yield only its unfindability. Whatever the phenomenal appearance, whatsoever it may be, to vision, to olfaction, whatever the case may be, it appears solely in form of its appearance and nothing else. Phenomenal appearance, when one seeks to find that which corresponds to phenomenal appearance and is that very thing, this being an ultimate analysis of that given phenomenon, one finds nothing actually that conforms to anything more than mere appearance, and that unfindability of anything more than mere appearance is emptiness. And then, 
Now this is not a this is not an intellectual in, invention of the Buddha Shakyamuni or any pundit or scholar. It is the actual analysis and findability or not as it actually is. And so it is said in the Madhyamaka Avatara, entering the way, entering the middle way, regardless of the appearance of a Buddha or non appearance of the Buddha, the ultimate truth found through ultimate analysis remains the same emptiness. Thus it is emptiness, impermanence, either actualities that are not mere intellectual fictions of any scholar or the Buddha Shakyamuni even. There is the, the ultimate mode of subsistence of phenomena and their appearance. We are preoccupied unknowingly with appearance alone, and this causes for us our hardship. Our preoccupation with the five senses with vision, with our vision, what we see in form, with our olfaction, what we smell, and the rest. This underlies the development of desirous attachment, which then informs an appreciation for a thing, creates an appreciation for a thing. Therein, not realizing that behind the appearance is a mode of subsistence different from the appearance of the phenomenon is what keeps us mired in misunderstanding. Mm. Now this avidya, this ignorance, uh, is addressed by insight into emptiness, and thus the purpose of the wisdom chapter. This way. <clears throat> A cursory presentation of the two truths then is thus. Huh? Hmm. Okay, well, allow me to review quickly. We speak of a relative truth, an obscurant truth, don't we? Now, if it's obscurant, why is it not called false? Tempani 
The obscure truth or the relative truth, it's appended by truth. Apparently it's a truth, yet it's called obscure. Why is it why isn't it simply called a false false? Now the difference is it isn't relative to absolute truth and on a shared basis of the same mind, it is taking place in a different mind altogether. Thus it is in that mind a truth. <clears throat> Allow me to recapitulate again then about the obscure truth, the relative truth. In the Madhyamaka Avatara, in the entering the middle way, it is said that that which obscures the actual is the obscure truth. Oh, yeah. That didn't do what the the net mando said. This is what I look like. 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 This is what do I stop here then? That did let Sanjana drink. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the Tabatil and the Chirans of Haritin and the rest. In the QA, then whatever your question, it's it's great. So, if, if possible, try to ask a question that concerns um, the topic. Um, but I know people have many questions about their life and their practice too. Um, I think uh, Gesha would be able to handle those also. Um, so uh, I'm really feeling that the people here today are extremely fortunate to have you know very very clear presentation um, with uh, a very clear um, translator. Thank you so much. You know, it makes a big difference. So um, even before I ask questions, I'd, I'd like to uh, you know, make the aspiration that uh, you know, Geshe will return to um, present more on the wisdom chapter. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've been down for a while. The ani chiba chile ni chedi samala. The ani peti shu kin kasi gie ani. Judin Maybe we need the microphone, so please wait until the microphone arrives. Uh, so, uh, are there uh, for mind to be a, a object of apprehension? Um, but you just said that there are different minds that apprehend both conventional truth and ultimate truth. So then mind is also a subject if conventional truth and ultimate truth are not the object. Is that correct? Can you repeat that one more time? For mind to be an object of apprehension. Mind itself to be an object? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then mind to be the subject uh, that is apprehending something and mind is also different for apprehending conventional truth and ultimate truth. How does that work? <clears throat> that's a, I know that's complicated for. What's the difference between two minds? I got well, it. I got this. I got now it. we have a subject and an object. I got this. We can't have true and false mind at the same time. 
ตาเดียวเนาะลาสวานียูนันยูเชนยูเรอันนี่ยูเชนคอร์นอันนี่ยังเชจาร์วาเชจาร์รังร้าลาสดีเดียวยูนันยูเชนกี้เยซูชิ
Thank you, Keshava. I have a question. Um, if I'm following, um, so to be a Buddha, you would understand the six paramitas, but to understand wisdom, you need to understand the two truths. And if you can understand that through one's own experience of life, come to understand that, then that is maybe the gateway to enlightenment. ane ตินเดจุกโมตินเดขัจเจตินเดยอเรเบอ่ะตินยอเรสอืมอันเนอะฉะนั้นมิเซกินนางลาเนมิทอปอเจลันเดวะสอกโกยอนาสอ่าอกส
ani jimbe parchin ani shere ke ala chagin yona mena indri ki dutsu chi yoba che ni di re ani re karisa di dutsu gandes ah tup tup kare ah in pe parchi chipo ge chipo ge now it's it's inconceivable but the hood achieved through generosity alone the reason is for generosity even to be perfected itself requires for instance ethical discipline joined with it a scruples used for the correct practice of generosity without any support of ethical discipline generosity cannot be perfected there is no conceivable argument for generosity alone being sufficient for the arising of production of that wisdom realizing emptiness however the other the, the argument that is made is that you it isn't absolutely necessary to have the preceding five paramitas for the development of the wisdom realizing emptiness steady contemplation and meditation upon emptiness may be sufficient this case is made is it what was that clear if it wasn't clear then allow me to address your question again it 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 answered it answered questions yes uh, my original uh question was what arguments were brought up to assert that the generosity was sufficient but perhaps that's not necessary to answer that further <clears throat> Such arguments are not unheard of. Uh, 
there are those who <laughs> make such a case, <clears throat> those who, who have employ a different set of assumptions that are not definitive to make a case such as the one that is made that prayer is sufficient for rebirth in a Buddha land. This is an instance of, of just sort this sort of view. Uh, this is not a definitive interpretation. It is a, an, a different understanding. Thank you, Geshla, for the very profound and clear instruction and for your very talented translator. My question is about the um, two minds, the ordinary mind and Arya mind. I wonder, do I have both of those minds within me or do both of those minds act through me? And if so, how do I strengthen my experience with the Arya mind? ゴルフ、あの、たまでのだ、あの、パクロ、ニカ、ドゥチェグラ、ヨルベ、ソスギグラ、ミチ、ナイバイナ、ネギグラ、あの、ドゥチェグラ、ロニ、ニカヨルベ
to some consumer with Shira, Junior, Junior, his chick number, and the Maso Chima Jayo Mares, Pambo Tupando, Tennis, and Batene, Combat, for him to talk or a mato, name at the Maso Chima to Jayo Mares, the Rambar and Bandogres. It is low. It is a necessarily a sequence and progressive this development, a progressive, progressive development beginning in study, advancing through contemplation and culminating in meditation necessarily done in a progressive way. Uh, Rinpoche, thank you for, for um, I'm guess you a lot, I'm sorry. Thank you for speaking with us this afternoon. It's a great honor. <clears throat> a mind, a person who has, who perceives correctly, looks at ordinary reality and sees that all objects begin and end are the product of cause and effect. A mind, that correctly perceives that all objects are the products of cause and effect. What more is necessary to have correct perception? Young duck, young duck, but talk to a lawyer of a jet. Right, young duck, but you No, I mean, young duck, but talk to and this is real. I'm not sure. I'm saying you don't get a rally to the tone. You mean, young duck, but talk to. Chiore, Kareore, that the Lodian, Lokoranian, you don't can la, you don't can get top ki cake yo, tam, hone, tone, sene, ele, talk su, simba, Kareore, bena, oh, so what shall say? Yo tapa talk to the ne, Jota Chiela Rale, but talk to some get triggered at Shemba Yoreves. Tata yo tapa say at this, not to Tony's Jetiagi on tapa terra, hobby on the chena. Rava. And eh, Jota Chiela say at la, Jetan Taram of Yungres. Ne labot in the Yungre, Kali Cabot in the Yungres, Jota Chiena to say at Yorwa. Bena. Pogo Pamala Tupatoya and Ravota, Pogo Amala Tupatoya da, and eh, Chick Yorwata, Rapat in the young race, Pena Metode, Metode Apochaya, Choto Luda, and Chote to Tugu Yoba. It's a Tisa Ravada Vores. Natata Yota Patopa Lani, Tupato Seate, and Niko Yota Pati Menda Tata Topa, Parsha Patsam, Mato Koran, Nuni Mepachi. ตกสุดที่ที่ละโคโกเรสถ้าได้ยอมทําอาชีพเจ้าที่เอ่อเมโทดิโซชุดตอนเจนดาลูดะติโซเจยอรวาโทติโซเทติสระปะชาเรสเ
of a relationship between father and son, parents and their offspring, for instance, the one being dependent upon the other, being comparatively easy to understand, so too is the relation, relational nature of a flower to that which upon that upon which it depends, nutrients and water. One sees there that causes and conditions are a requirement, or rather, the flower depends upon these causes and conditions, the nourishment, the nutrients, the water. Now, this is comparatively, this is, this when compared to the mutual and relational nature of nominal imputation, easily, easily understood, but subtle among comprehensions is the comprehension of the of nominal imputation in which a nominal imputation is made and the basis of designation itself must nevertheless be understood to be non-existent. And here you have a very subtle form of cause and condition, namely cause and condition involved in the relative and mutual establishment of the nominal imputed and the designated object. This is comparatively subtle. And this is in fact uh, the more, uh, this is in fact the, the, <clears throat> the most thoroughgoing correct perception of cause and condition. Was that clear? So it's just awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm so delighted, really having a good day today, not only because of um, um, Yersha's uh, profound and clear presentation, but because, um, you know, my, my students, I can tell through their questions and their dedication, you know, are really um, thinking deeply on these subjects, you know, so that that gives me a real sense of uh, delight, you know, that's, that's the best, right? So, um, not when teacher and student come together, then it's, it's just the best, isn't it? So we're going to do dedication, and then after, then we'd like to do a cut line so people can uh, come up and uh, greet Geshla, um, and, uh, you know, uh, just say hello. So I've asked people just to kind of say your name, introduce yourselves, okay, a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna have uh, Connor do the dedication. ตอนนี้ตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นตอนนั้นต
May the supreme jeweled bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chen Rezi, Tenzin Jiaozu, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the beholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Losong, the magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver, a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushi, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Losandrapa, I make request at your holy feet. <laughs> Jangke <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Mama Paura, at the end of Yep, you can see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, take that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Omo araya pasaya na indi Om araya pasaya na indi Om araya pasaya na indi